Okay, let's talk about a little bit of some setup that I have done offline. The first thing I did is I made a small subset of our fracture mesh, which is going to be a little test bed for us so that we don't have to you know, wait for the, uh, the whole thing to process. I also created a material and I have created a structure here of an editor utility widget. All of this, for the most part, there's one new thing in here, but everything else has been covered in the previous videos. The material stuff is gonna be pretty straightforward. Take a quick look at it. I have the textures from two Megascans assets. This one is granite rock, and this one is gonna be mossy ground. And what I want is a material that's gonna look at the surface normal from the, from the vertex normal here, and I can use that as a mask multiplied against the noise texture so that I can basically have mostly granite, but on surfaces that are pointing up, I'm gonna put a random smattering there of moss. So very quickly, if I zoom in a little bit, this is gonna be a make material attributes. The color is plugged into base color. The normal is plugged in to the normal slot. And then there's gonna be this extra map here, which is a combination map. The red channel is the ambient occlusion make. The green channel is going to be roughness and the blue channel is displacement. So we don't really need displacement here. So we don't have to worry about that. And then down here, it's the exact same thing. So those are going to get plugged into this blend material attributes node, which is going to have two inputs and then an alpha. The alpha basically means when the value is white, we're going to be picking the B input. And when the value is black, we're going to be picking the A input. And I'll talk about how to generate that alpha in a second. I have created a preview so that we can do an AB where it's very clear what the inputs are because the moss and the granite are a little bit closer together so it's not as easy to get a clear read on what's gonna be what. So same deal here, we've got a couple of uh, constant threes, so red and blue. We're gonna do a lerp. We're gonna use an alpha, which is just that uh, mass that I'll talk about here in a second. That's getting piped into it, make material attributes. And then I have a static switch parameter which is useful if you want to toggle something between two inputs in the material instance. And then that all gets piped in here to a material where I have enabled use material attributes, because again, that's what this is going to be here. So, okay. For the mask, there's going to be, this is just a Perl and noise mask, which is just included by default with the project. You may have to grab uh, the starter content, but anyway, that's in there typically by default. And then I'm throwing a cheap contrast on there, piping that up to five. I'll show you what this looks like. I can preview the node. I'll throw it on a sphere, right? So it's gonna be very, very black and white without a whole bunch of gray in the middle. I don't want too much gray because I want it to either be on or off for the moss to have it sort of taper out. You know, it's a, not a very natural look. And then I've got a texture coordinate that I'm piping in here to make it bigger. So I've got this basically set to 0 0.05 because if it's at its default value, you can see rather than big blotches of black and white, it's kind of a more noisy texture, right? So I want it to just be nice big chunks. So we'll set that back to 0 0.05 and 0 0.05. And then this right here, this vertex normal world space is actually pretty cool. I'm just gonna actually, we'll preview the mask here. So if I click start previewing, what it's gonna do is it's gonna give me a nice mask that will allow me to select for parts of the surface that are pointing up by masking out and only using here the, the blue channel. If you wanted to get a different vector, one of these is gonna be like left and right, and then one of them is gonna be front and back. Right, you just have to rotate around. Anyway, so, but I just went up and down. And that is provided here by the blue channel. So I'm taking this and multiplying it by our noise, the inverse of our noise, we'll do a little subtract there. And then the result of this, if I start to preview this node, is going to look like this. And it's a little more obvious on a cube where the edges are completely black and the top surface has this random noise on it. Okay, so, and we're gonna actually do a little extra stuff here later on that's going to get it into the, we're gonna use the ambient occlusion. I'll bake that in then I, and then I will actually add that to the mask here. Okay, so, and then with this, uh, where is it, this blend preview, what that looks like here is here in the material instance, if I turn it on, then we're just gonna see those nice colors that make the blending very, very clear. So if I disable that, it's gonna look like this. Okay, so that's the material. 
hopefully it's clear on how to grab these textures. Uh, you just want to go to the mega scans, Quixel mega scans tool here, Quixel bridge, and then, and then just go and find them and they will show up here in the project. Kind of like this. So there's the mossy ground and there's the granite rock and there's the textures that are associated. Cool. All right. Let's talk very quickly about the editor utility widget. So a lot of this is going to look very, very familiar. We have a button. We're binding an event to that button on our event construct, and we're creating a dynamic mesh pool and creating a local reference to it. For our process fracture event, we're gonna go ahead and get our selected assets from the content browser. We're going to iterate over all of them. We are going to cast each one to a static mesh, and if that is successful, which it should be, we're going to generate a new static mesh path. So ultimately we're gonna be saving off a mesh, and this function here, generate new static mesh path is going to take the input data from whatever our selected object is. It's going to build a new path and append the word process to it. Back to our event graph. Once we've got the ultimate save path worked out, we're gonna go ahead and request a dynamic mesh. And we're gonna copy from the input static mesh to the dynamic mesh. So now we have one dynamic mesh, which is a copy of our input geometry, which is that fractured mesh, which has lots of individual elements to it. So what we want to do is we want to basically split each element off and then process it and then append it back into a new dynamic mesh and then save that out. So we're going to have to create a new dynamic mesh here. We're not going to do any copying. We're going to keep it blank for now. We're going to take our original dynamic mesh, which has all the, in the individual elements, and we're going to use the split mesh by components. And to do that, we need to feed it the dynamic mesh pool because it's going to be generating a dynamic mesh for every single element. And then we're going to iterate over the list of dynamic meshes generated when we split our big mesh up with all the individual bricks and broken pieces and whatnot. So for each one of those individual pieces, I have another function here called process mesh. For now, all process mesh does is it takes the input mesh and it spits it right back out. So this is where we're gonna be adding all of our functionality. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to append that to the dynamic mesh that we created over here. So this is the one where we're setting our dynamic mesh variable, right? So as each rock is split off, processed, and then appended, it's going to be appended back onto this dynamic mesh, which ultimately we are going to create a new static mesh from using our path that we generate in this function here. And then we're going to save it. And then we're going to return all the meshes that we generated. So without having to do anything else here, if I run the utility widget, which is already running, and I select this object. We go to the details panel and we'll find where this thing lives. So with it selected, I'll go ahead and save it. We're going to get an exact copy, except the name of it is going to be appended with processed there, right? So if I bring it in, they should look identical. Okay, so now what we can do is we can set up some functionality in our process mesh function to up-res this and do the UVs and, and kind of all the rest of it. So we'll take a look at how to do all that stuff in the next video.